My name is Harlan Krumholtz. I'm a professor of medicine at the Yale School of Medicine. And I'm here today to talk to you about a recent preprint that came out that describes some immunologic features of people with long COVID. Now, there have been many theories about what's causing long COVID. Some people think it's about viral persistence. Some people think it's about autoimmunity. Some people think it's about disruption of the microbiome, some about reactivation of other viruses. Some think it's tissue damage that was initially started with the acute infection that persists. And some people just plain doubt the existence of it. And those of us who have been talking to patients are convinced that this is real, that people are suffering. And it's likely that there are many different clusters or groups of people who are experiencing things maybe with different mechanisms. But what's clear is that, that there are a lot of people who are affected. The CDC thinks that maybe one in four people with COVID actually ended up having symptoms that stretched beyond uh, four weeks. Uh, the estimates of people who have severe symptoms is something like three to five percent. But but we're still needing to learn a lot about this. And this study sought to take people who were infected fairly early in the pandemic and look at a group that had persistent symptoms, a group that had good recovery, and a group that were just simply healthy controls. And the question is, what would their symptoms show us? Uh, were there distinguishing features about what they were experiencing? And then what would their immune system, with deep immune profiling, looking at thousands of different features of the immune system, could we begin to understand this better? This work was led by an MD-PhD student, John Klein. It was led by the labs, a two-year collaboration between labs of Dave Petrino at Mount Sinai and Akiko Iwasaki at Yale, and many other people who contributed. So, so what were the main findings of this preprint? Again, uh, under submission at a peer-reviewed journal, but it represents the science to date. So first of all, uh, the patients who were reporting the long COVID symptoms had a fairly specific group of symptoms. Now, their symptoms were really broad-based, but they ended up in some clusters that were very different from any symptoms that were reported by those who were ostensibly healthy or who had gotten through COVID without really having this long COVID syndrome. The most common things were, were brain fog, fatigue, dysautonomia, but there were a whole wide range of symptoms that tended to distinguish the group. And, and so that that's represents on the patient reported side. Now on the immunophenotyping side, there were marked differences that started to become apparent such that, that the group that was reporting long COVID was very different than the group that wasn't. There was some overlap, but, but there were very distinctive distributions for a wide range of things, such things as exhausted T cells or some of the interleukins or double positive T cells, activated B cells, DNB cells, and non-classical monocytes. Now, now, for those who aren't in the field, these, these words may not mean a lot, but, but the important thing is that the immune system was reflecting a sort of very different activation profile, a very different what we might call immune signature than what we were seeing in the other group. Now, the SARS-CoV specific antibody responses were also elevated in those who were reporting long COVID after vaccination. So, for the, there were you know those who had been vaccinated were demonstrating a, a sort of different response, more elevated IgG, and again some differentiation between the groups. There was also evidence of herpes virus reactivation in the long COVID patients, as well as Epstein-Barr virus. So there were, there's sort of clues around here that maybe viral reactivation might be playing a role. Interestingly, there was a long look at a big list of autoantibodies and nothing really came out of that. A lot of us have been wondering, are autoantibodies at play here? And at least in this group, that wasn't uh, what was suggested by the results. It seemed like, using machine learning, that, that this profile of long COVID was distinctive. In fact, if you just looked at the immune signatures, you could predict in the group who had long COVID, who had, was reporting long COVID as a result of the way these immune signatures looked. And then, then there was one really intriguing finding. Low cortisol levels were reported more commonly in those with long COVID. And in fact, it was associated with disease severity raising the possibility that this could be used as a screen or, or it is a potential strong mechanism. Of course, cortisol is very strongly related to stress response. So it was a bit puzzling to see this finding. Now, all these things are going to need to be replicated. There are issues with regard to the size of this study, with regard to what the controls were. It represents a very early study, and it hasn't been through peer review yet. But the most important thing is that when we took a bunch of people with long COVID, reporting long COVID symptoms, they became sort of, they were very distinctive with regard to their symptoms, 
but they were also very distinctive with regard to their immune signatures, suggesting, indicating, demonstrating that really this is a, a syndrome that can be described and is reflected in biological processes. And now we just need to get going to understand it more, bring in more people, be able to study this with greater fidelity. We're doing this at Yale. We have a, a study called the LISTEN study. We're working with David. Akiko's lab is at the forefront of this. You can look up LISTEN study at yale.edu uh, and find out more about this study where we're trying to bring people in and enlarge what we've done in, in this, this study of immune profiling. But lots of questions remain. But the important thing is that this supports the idea that people who are complaining of long COVID actually have physiologic issues. Many of their other tests have been normal. That's because our tests within clinical practice are insensitive to pick this up. But using this expanded array of tests, thousands of tests, reflecting the immune system function, producing these immune signatures, we can see differences. So more to come, but this is an important contribution in our view about getting us started and to build on.